Hey friends, it's Friday and that means it's time for yet another Q&A session. And our aim in all of this is to bring the questions and the dilemmas and the challenges that you and I face every day to God's life-changing word so that we are guided by Him. And today's question is one that has been all over social media lately and it goes like this. How should a Christian respond to racism? I hear these racist white supremacist groups say they are also Christian. What do you think of that, Pastor Michael? Right out of the gate, I want to make this abundantly clear that all favoritism and racism and prejudice and superiority is anti-gospel, period. White supremacists and neo-Nazis, the KKK, and all the rest who claim to know Christ while thumping on their Bibles are actually stomping on the Bible and know nothing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Their words and their actions are repulsive to God and they should be repulsive to everyone who knows and loves God. Now, how can I say this though? It's because God's word makes it abundantly clear. First, God made one race in Adam Yet many ethnic groups, all beautifully displaying the glory of God together. It says this in Acts chapter 17, verse 26, that he, God, made from one man, that's Adam, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. God has made us all, every man, woman, and child, to live together all over the earth. And second point is this, that though God made one race, yet many ethnic groups, there's no one ethnic group that's more significant or more valuable in the sight of God. We are all equal image bearers of God. Even God's chosen people, Israel, were selected by God so that they would be a light to all the other nations around them so that they too could be brought into relationship with God. And for example, God condemns Jonah the prophet's belief that the Assyrians of Nineveh should not receive God's full compassion and forgiveness. And God made a promise with Abraham that through his seed, through his descendants, all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's what it says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And that's ultimately pointing to Christ who would come, the God-man, to rescue and redeem men and women from every tribe and language and people and nation, as it says in Revelation chapter 5. That Jesus Christ, God the Son, would come to reconcile us to God. People from all over the world, people from every ethnic group, God's heart is for all of us to be reconciled to Him through the Son. And because the gospel then has brought vertical reconciliation between us and God. The gospel calls us to horizontal reconciliation with everyone else, all the rest of the redeemed of God. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 through 22 makes clear. That we were alienated, that there was enmity, that there was hostility, that there was this dividing wall between us and God, but also between ethnic groups, between Jew and Gentile. But now we are the one people of God redeemed through Christ who is our cornerstone and we're being built together as a holy temple in the Lord. And so anything that even smacks of racism or prejudice is anti-gospel. So how should you and I now live? As followers of Jesus Christ, how should we respond to racism? First, silence is not an option. We must not be silent. We must condemn all racism as anti-gospel. Jesus would. And Jesus is condemning racism, even right now, through the clear prophetic voice of his people. Number two, every day, we should love, we should listen, and we should seek to live life together with people who have experienced the assault of racism. It might make some of you uncomfortable to do that, but God is calling all of us from every ethnic group to live together. You see, I've said for a long time that I believe Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream is God's desire for his church that people from every tribe and language 
and nation would love one another, worship Jesus Christ, the Lamb, together, live together, and display the glory of God together. You see this picture of our staff from Life Change Action? That's beautiful. That's a tapestry right there of people from not only just three countries, United States, Mexico, and New Zealand, but several different languages and a lot of different ethnicities. Myself, I'm, I'm, Jew, I'm German, I'm Czechoslovakian, I'm a little bit Polish, a little bit English, a whole mixture there. Together, we want to live together, listen to one another, love one another. Now, I can't begin to know or imagine what my black brothers and sisters have experienced in the United States. I can't postulate that somehow I understand what they're going through. I can't say, oh, I understand, I get it. I don't. So I need to listen and love and seek to do life together with them as a follower of Jesus Christ because of the gospel of Christ. This is what God is calling us to do. So before I wrap it up, I've got one final bottom line thought for you as I walk here in downtown Burlington, North Carolina. Here's the thought. We are called to be a church of unity within beautiful diversity. And that's kind of like jazz harmony, that each instrument is playing its own unique, diverse part, yet all the instruments are playing one beautiful mosaic of a song together. And it just so happens that there's a jazz hall right here in downtown Burlington, and I'm gonna go check it out. Unfortunately, it's closed right now, but it looks like a really awesome place inside. Very family friendly. They throw birthday parties here, listening to live jazz music. Can't wait to hear saxophone here. Maybe I'll take Stephanie on a date sometime. But don't forget this thought that God has called us to be a church of unity within beautiful diversity, playing this mosaic of a song together to display His glory. Let's not forget that. Let's respond and live like that today.